The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a and a is never funny no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. You look terrible. What happened? I was re <laughs> 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 what? Mm, you know what that is? Mm -mm. That's a ass black man on your pale white ass. Uh -huh. huh, huh, huh. Julia, I'm, I'm not gonna sleep with you. We'll see about that. You think rape is funny? No, I think it's awful. Unless it's a woman raping a man. That's inherently funny. <laughs> you want to explain to me what you're doing here? I came looking for booty. You came looking for sex with an underage boy? Oh no, I, I ain't come looking for no little bars. I ain't got no milk, no cookies, nothing. I came looking for man's butt. A man's butt? Excuse me? I watch your TV show all the time. So you can go ahead and bring in them cameras and them police is waiting outside. It don't make me no difference. Now, I tell you what. I like you and I want you. Now, we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. Except the choice isn't yours, is it? Because therein lies the joke, right? Your lack of choice. That and the Booty Bandit's ravenous obsession with booty. Chris Hansen's booty, to be specific, it's weird. Somebody needs to study that. Ooh, I'm sorry, what? Oh, oh, they have. Oh, <laughs> we'll more on that in just a moment. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't know why I laughed at that. We all know that there's nothing funny about abuse of any kind, right? Except maybe when the victims of said abuse are the unprotected or the unsuspected. There's a serial rapist in Houston. There's nothing funny about serial but <laughs> what is noteworthy about this particular <laughs> is that all of his victims have been men. Enjoy your evening. You know what I think is noteworthy about Dave Chappelle's joke and the audience's response to it? It highlights the crux of the issue. If we intuitively know that rape is wrong, right? And that in many respects, it's one of the darkest ways to victimize someone. Why do we laugh? Well, the answer is simple, right? Patriarchy is the punchline. In a strong man society, the audience has long since been indoctrinated to believe that men are not supposed to be victimized in general right and certainly not victims or survivors of sv and the ones who do i.e queer men trans men black men men of color well i mean you know it's okay to laugh at them <laughs> we always do even as kids we come to understand that boys are not meant to engage with pain in the same way that girls do so when you see your dad hugging and kissing your sister's boo-boos and patting you on the back giving you a light skin band-aid and telling you to run along you get it you understand. And if that sounds too specific not to be personal, it's because it is. Even as kids, we understand that boys don't cry and that they always want it. And I do mean always want it. Even when they look like they don't. <laughs> Today's lesson, Touchy Feely 101. <laughs> Wait, I, I haven't studied for this lesson. <laughs> Of course that isn't true, right? There are many instances in which men don't want it. Otherwise, how do we get numbers like almost 30% of American men experiencing rape, physical violence, or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime? And that doesn't even begin to graze the surface of the real issue because we don't have the system, services, or societal support necessary for many men to feel like they can come and speak out. We're not prepared to hear them, but that issue too becomes Comedized. Seven men have already come forward in the Houston area and reported this, which, which means he must have thousands. Because that's a tough phone call for us to make. Society don't give a about male rape. This ain't no hotline for us. If man get raped, you just gotta get up and walk that shit off. Huh? <laughs> Caught me slipping. Male abuse victims and the jokes that surround them serve to support the same myths that sustain grape culture, that reduce allyship, and that delegitimize the experiences of so many men who've, you know, encountered this thing. That's straight, queer, trans, however you identify. 
And don't get me wrong, I will be the first to say, and I have said it many times on my platform, that I understand the severity of, of the way DV and SV impacts women. For every one in four man that experiences SV and DV, there's one in three women experiencing the same thing in the United States. With that issue compounding on itself at the intersection of race, socioeconomic stance, and geographic region. And the vast majority of their perpetrators, and the perpetrators against any demographic, right, any gender, are men. And I understand that. However, the purview of today's discussion is not in spite of the importance of that conversation, but it's because of the importance of that conversation that we illuminate every area, even the spots that I personally believed go societally overlooked and ignored. And so I've decided to focus in on this particular demographic and really the factors that encourage them to remain silent. Because the biggest issue with male victimization and, you know, of DV and SV is that you cannot speak of it. To do so exposes the real secret truth behind this patriarchy. Nobody wins. Such a revelation could truly disrupt the stratified hierarchy. And I think it's time that today on this corner of the internet, we highlight that truth. A truth that the powers that be do not want illuminated was that this space of brute struggle for masculine affirmation is actually their happy place that full manhood can only be attained if you sink your traumas if you sink yourself well you heard me sink. it's about power i was sexually assaulted by a successful hollywood agent Right. You know what they're gonna do to you in jail? Why am I going to jail? Let me Shit. show you. What I, this is gonna happen to your little ass Yo, in jail. Where you going, fatty? We're gonna have a party. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> we went on seven dates! Nine. I roofied you on two of them. Morning, and the police report described him as five foot nine and 140 pounds. <laughs> or as his soulmate put it, just right. <laughs> I was forced to perform on several inmates. And I was told you aren't going to fight back, are you sweetness? Oh, you're going to be going back to the showers. And the only speed you're going to reach is 88 dudes per hour. As I shared my story, I was told over and over that this was not abuse. That this was just a joke. Hey ho girl, whoa boy and homies. Yeah, I know it's a lot, but welcome and they're welcome back to my corner of the internet. So it's the top of the year at my time of recording this. And so I will start with um, manners and home trading. Happy New Year <laughs> for my returning homegirls, homeboys and homies. I want you guys to know this, and for my new people, you'll also know this as well. This year, I really want to dedicate myself and my channel to my craft. There are many things that I can do and many things that I do well, but on this channel, I find the area that I, that delicate balance that I strike is cultural critique, and I do it in such a specific way. And I want to hone in on that. And so that means higher quality videos and deeper analysis and deeper research. Yeah, that's right. I'm fully stepping into my media and cultural critic bag. Okay. But as a result of that, that also means less frequent videos, right? Because of the increased research and the increased work and fewer ad dollars as a result of that as well. YouTube don't pay sh anyway, so it is what it is. But because of this, at the top of this video, I would like to encourage you. If you love my channel, if you love what I do, if you watch this video and the next one and the next one and the next one, but you will, I would encourage you to join my Patreon as a form of support to this channel. Selfishly, you'll be supporting my mission to elevate the voices and experiences of intersectional identities, but also unselfishly. You know, I'm a key. I gotta be honest with me and you, I'm a vibe. And so that means over on the Patreon, you'll get access to a variety of content that you just won't get on this channel as I am reconstructing this channel and so many things will be gone and moved up onto the Patreon. Now, on to the first chapter of today's video. Men dominate, get dominated. Even when the men are the bitch. I don't know. You know, there isn't much that Cat Williams said in that now viral video with Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay that I can actually publicly align myself with. It was a lot going on over there. <laughs> but the unequivocal condemning of grape for any victim of any person and, and, and saying that that is not funny in any context is certainly something that I can get behind. It is never funny, no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny. 
sensible sensible i agree with everything he said here especially and in particular the stance that he took on there's no way to comedize this thing right let's never do that now much else was said that i just you know less sensible <laughs> much else was said that was less sensible big deviants is all catching hell in 2024 it's up for all of them i just cannot <laughs> I'm not going to get too much into Cat Williams in that. Today, I wanted to start with that particular video because a lot of the conversation circulating online has been around the role of comedy in softening the blow of men who experience, you know, SV and DV, right? And it kind of desensitizes the public to this very, very real issue, right? And also because his perspective kind of epitomized what I was trying to go for when I was initially drafting out this video in my mind, right? And I wanted to explore DV and SV as it as it pertains to demographics that are overlooked and un ignored. And so that looked like trans people, that looked like low and middle income folk, that looked like folks in third world countries, queer folk, and so forth and so on. But as I began to do the research to actually put this video together, I said, Harvey, uh uh, you're doing it again, babe. You're biting off more than you can chew. Pause. So I decided to focus on one particular group male victims, straight, queer, cis, trans. Although there is not a lot of research out there with respect to trans men and their victimization in this particular topic. Um, and so to that, I say researchers do better. Now, even with Cat Williams' redirection of the Friday after next scene, the setup to the punchline still remains the same. And so I have similar critiques, even if it went all the way, right? Because it still relies on a socially accepted grapey joke. Terry Crews' character is fresh out of prison. He's big, he's tall, he's black, right? And so he fits a very specific stereotype and image that has been repeated consistently throughout American film and cinema. His character then sees a smaller, more feminine presenting man, which is Cat Williams with, you know, a you know, Preston Curl, you know, living his life. He's a pimp, P-I-M-P. Um, and so naturally, right, his homoerotic urge, his uncontrollable homoerotic urge demands that he dominate that man, right? The urge overcomes him. And so he follows him into the bathroom and attempt, in an attempt to, you know, don't fight this shit. Why was she? Just let it happen. Now, I know a lot of people will probably say to me, like, well, Herbie. I don't get it. Like, wh what's the critique? The punchline of the joke is now that the assailant is the one who's being attacked, you know, as the victim defends themselves. And they, and they do so in a funny way. You lost your mind. What the hell? Am I Come on, baby. You got a lot of I guess my first issue with that is pretty obvious to me it's placing sv in the context of comedy and humor in any capacity it's just not funny there's nothing funny about it babe and i love to laugh and i love to laugh at things that may be seen as problematic and so i do so behind the curtain i, I try to do so behind the curtain but there's nothing funny about that to me ever but even deeper than that i feel like there are three issues that I identify within that scene that speak to much of the cinema that I've seen. It's the comedizing of prison rape. It's the homophobic equation of hypersexuality with homosexuality. And it's the racist trope that the big black man means inherently that he is sexually deviant and aggressively dominant. It's tired. You know, something I think about often is homophobia is the reason why you bitches are not getting justice. <laughs> they gonna be mad at Darwin. They gonna be mad at Darwin. Well, just be mad. I said it and I'm dropping the mic. Sorry, just kidding. No, I, I need this to tell my testimony, so I can't drop the mic. I hear a lot of overt homophobes and obviously the invert closeted homophobes agree, right? The diet homophobes, they agree silently. I don't know why they call it homophobia. I ain't never been scared of a punk. <laughs> Whoa. As a tenured, damn near PhD recipient of homosexual studies, I have a couple of choice words for you, but I'll settle for saying I don't buy it. I don't buy it. First of all, no one is saying that you are afraid of homosexuals, right? No one is saying that. What we are saying is that the, the notion of queerness, right? The idea of gayness 
terrifies you. No, petrifies you. You don't want to be seen next to it. But on a more serious note, you're also afraid of being made victim to hashtag their whims, right? Being essayed or SV'd by a gay man. This operates in a, as a sort of like contained fear, right? Within a particular context. And we actually grant it free range to exist within that context, right? As long as it lives within the realm of retribution, within the realm of justice, right? In jail. And see, there's a lot of issues with that. Firstly, the absence of logic here is that grape is never justifiable under any circumstances. I can't believe I have to say that. Whether it's male on male, female on male, intersex on, you know, female. There's no context in which taking ownership of somebody's body unconsensually is justifiable, not even in person. But also it just doesn't make sense from a statistical space because queer folks are more likely to be the victims of this kind of crime than the assailants, particularly within non-intimate partner violence, right? But also it confuses the real objective and goal of this particular SV, right? This activity. It's not about sexuality. It's about power. And so the notion that SV between one man and another is always about this uncontrollable homoerotic lust is a fallacy. It's a lie. And it's a lie that can create a false sense of security for straight men amongst potentially straight assailants and a, an unnecessarily truculent and hostile environment around queer folk who are potentially allies, more than likely. In layman's terms, we don't want you, nigga. <laughs> Hello. But unfortunately, who cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining? Grape in this context is not only seen as funny. He's, he's the one who famously said, I'd take a bullet for Donald Trump. <laughs> well, now that he's looking at prison time, we'll see if he's willing to take a dick. <laughs> but really as a byproduct of the bad decisions that these criminals made. I'm, uh... Never gonna be the same. The prison industrial complex indoctrinates us to dehumanize all criminals. We already agree that they are disposable. So anything that happens to these disposable entities doesn't matter. They're not really human. They're criminals. And criminals ain't really human. Do you see how this logic directly aligns up with the approach to slaves and three-fifths human? Do you see that? We're not going there today. I just want you to sit with that. Many folks just believe it's par for the course, unfortunately. And these two ideas perpetuated largely by media and obviously both traditional media and social media, which is the sad part because social media is transactional in that it's two feed communication, right? We're being fed things by the algorithm and then we speak back. And a lot of times when people speak back with respect to these things, I don't like what they're saying. They're agreeing with the racist and, and, and misogynistic, homophobic, and anti-victim, right, sentiments. There's this belief that male grape jokes are funny and also that there's a context in which it's warranted and it's acceptable. And those beliefs do not exist in a vacuum. They 100% impact the real world. I don't know if you've heard this, but prison grape is actually on the rise. I was reading a study where I read that in 2018, correctional administrators reported 27,826 allegations of SV in prisons, jails, and other adult correctional facilities. Of those allegations, 1,673 were substantiated after investigation. The number of allegations rose 180% from 2011 to 2015. Now, I have several issues with these numbers. Sorry. One, that they exist in the first place. Two, these numbers don't include any reports of sexual harassment. Like, at all. Three, the way that we get these numbers. And this might be my biggest issue, to be honest with you. I don't know if you're familiar with Priya, which is the prison... Elimination Act of 2003, it requires that the Bureau of Justice Statistics carry out for each calendar year a comprehensive statistical review and analysis of the incidences and effects of prison grape. To do this in large part, they nationally collect reports by correctional administrators. This is a very big issue for me because if you allow me to grade myself, I get an A every time, baby. 
I get an A every time, especially when you're going to give me additional funding to do so. Another issue that I have, oh girl, I'm reading these people. I got to, I got time today. I don't know if you knew this as well, but the Federal Bureau of Prisons was funded $8.7 billion with a B. Yes, like Bezos, billion dollars last year. That's over a half a billion dollar increase from the 2022 enacted level. You cannot convince me because I understand as a person who went to college that studied communication, digital media, and so subsequently media, that these comical depictions in media of prison grape, male on male sexual violence, or even female on male sexual violence, because that too is a very large issue in terms of the way that we handle that as a public, right? That hasn't aided in the kind of national desensitization of our population to these folks and, and understanding that these people are victims as well just like in any other context that it doesn't inform the way that correctional officers see these people see them whether they see them as victims or just part of just part of the the correctional facility you know what i mean it's property property can be harmed but we don't we don't lose sleep over property being harmed and really it doesn't help the queer survivors both in prison and in real life who are being silent he's gay he wanted it right first of all he's not gay he's most likely bi okay um i read this article from the american sociological foundation or excuse me the american sociological association and it was aimed at assessing the prevalence of sv stalking intimate personal excuse me intimate partner violence across different sexual orientations within the united states right um and it revealed to me that the following is true um, sorry, I was about to say revealed because RuPaul's Drag Race comes on tonight. My brain is everywhere. Bisexual men consistently had a significantly higher lifetime prevalence of all reported forms of SV compared to heterosexual men. Respectively, for bisexual men and heterosexual men, the lifetime experiences for contact SV were 39% as compared to 60, excuse me, 16.8% for heterosexual men. For grape, 11.3% as compared to 1.1%. For being made to penetrate someone, 13.3% and 6.1%. For being made to penetrate someone while under the influence, 12.7% and 5.1%. And so forth and so on. Similar numbers exist for gay men, meaning it, the numbers were higher for gay men as compared to heterosexual men. But, but this is still very much a straight man's issue. This is a woman's issue. This is a human rights issue. And that's really the crux of today's conversation, right? Of course, I've already purchased this study, so patrons, y'all know where to find the PDF. It is important to underscore here that while many of the victims of SV are queer, and so we need to create more, we need to create better systems of support and prevention, right? It's safe to say that the prevalence of DL culture and homophobia, the vast majority of these assailants do not identify as LGBTQ. I had to sit down and urinate. I had to face the wall to shower. I was not allowed at any point in time to have any mention of me being a man or having a and with the continual linking of queerness to male victims of SV and DV, even for straight victims, right? Straight male victims or for male victims who've been victimized by women, right? Um, and with the hatred that people have, right, for all things queer and all things feminine, it makes it very difficult for men to be able to come out and say what happened to them because you will be emasculinized, right? This linking that I keep doing to queerness, homophobia, femphobia, it all centers for straight men around this idea of being less of a man and being emasculated. And that's what happens. If something like this, if you allowed right? Something like this to happen to you as a straight man. If, if you're listening to this audio lead for whatever reason, I did air quotes. If you allow something like this to happen to you as a straight man, for whatever the reason, by a woman or by another man, you're the kind of man that can be dominated by someone else. And so therefore you're not a real man. And I always say this for men who identify for males who identify as men, the worst thing that you can do is strip them of their masculinity because it is in essence stripping them of their humanity in this patriarchal society. There's no space for them to exist. They don't get to exist anywhere other than within the masculine space. And so it makes it very difficult for men to come out and say, hashtag me too. In recent years, we've seen folks like Terry Crews, even like Christian Keys, right? They've all recently come out, pause, with their stories and experiences with SV and DV. Years, not one, not two, not three, more years of 
sexual harassment and attempted sexual assault. And I want to air that out so bad. And of course, on my corner of the internet, likely your corner of the internet, I think you're a good person, right? If you're watching this video and you've made it this far, we praise these people because we're allies, right? Um, and so that just means supporting them in whatever way makes sense in this virtual world, right? We all have become increasingly more connected. And so if that means I support you in the comments and just typing that, I believe you in the comments and just typing that, you know, donating to whatever funds, if people have funds, we are there and we make these people feel like it's a safe space. However, I don't feel like the vast majority of the internet and the carceral system is on their side. Right. Particularly when they're coming against people in positions of power, men in positions of power. There are many folks online who don't have things nice to say and them respectfully, (laughs) disrespectfully. But I did for just a moment want to take time to discuss the immense bravery that it takes for anybody to come forward. Right. Particularly in a society that hates women, hates people of color, hate is anti-black and where it understands statistically it does make sense but where they do understand men as assailants and not survivors especially if you're a person of color and so when i saw terry cruz come forward christian keys come forward stefan harper who was the person who accused nba player dwight howard of sv and sa right i supported them because i understand the difficulty for these men of color to come forward and say their truth the magnitude of those allegations and the weight of their words, right? And the way, the weight that their words carry in the judicial system, who cares about them? They make up majority of the carceral system and that's not by accident. We are not trained to engage with black people as victims, period, full stop. We don't have the the, the sociological training to understand how to understand black victims in particular, black male victims. What? That is antithetical. Male, black victim, not seeing it. Villain, yes, right? And so our indoctrination does not allow us to properly investigate villain and victimhood and all of its complexity and all of its nuance. And that's really above all else what I want us to do better from this video is to understand the numbers and to also take a keen ear to each situation, right? Critically think, hello, critically think. But as I said in my Gen Z can't read or maybe I changed it to Gen Alpha now can't read video, we are all cognitively declining. There is a global IQ decline. So critically think it might be not the easiest thing, but lead with empathy and you might be good. I mean, in particular for someone like Terry Crews, who himself has played that, who's played into that stereotype of you are the uncontrollable, sexually deviant black beast, right? And so therefore you'll do anything to anyone. You'll be the aggressor to anyone. When he came out and spoke his truth about his experience with SV, I thought it was particularly profound. The assault lasted only minutes, but what he was effectively telling me while he held my genitals in his hand was that he held the power. He disrupts the stereotype and it's important to have him there saying this happened to me. He is not any less of a man, right? You step to him and I'm sure you might find out, but that's, this is not about that. He's not any less of a man, but he too was victimized. And so it's important for that. And then also when I think about Stefan Harper, a black queer, I think male, I don't know how they identify, definitely male, but certainly I don't know how their gender, what their gender identification is, but folks are not inclined to believe a sissy ever, ever, (laughs) ever. Who's going to defend and believe him? I have so many thoughts. My mind is everywhere. This video has gotten pretty long. So I want to end with this excerpt that I, um, from the same study that I mentioned earlier today. But first, if you've made it to the end of this video, comment and SV and sv love you for that now the excerpt that i wanted to end with is the impact of all of these things on the united states 
you know, within the, this is within a U.S. context. I'm sorry for anyone who's watching internationally. Um, but it says the impact of these types of violence can be lifelong. The initial impact of IPV, which is intimate partner violence, may require legal housing and crisis or advocacy services. Health impacts of IPV include negative physical health outcomes ranging from acute trauma and injury to chronic neurological and gastro gastrointestinal and reproductive health disorders. Numerous mental health consequences are associated with IPV, such as fear, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, or PSD, anxiety, and substance abuse. SV can result in STIs um, and pregnancy and is associated with poorer pregnancy outcomes, right? Such as delays in seeking prenatal care, preterm birth, low birth rate, and prenatal Death. As a result of the many health outcomes mentioned and their associated loss of productivity and income, the production, excuse me, the population economic burden of IPV in the United States is estimated to be nearly three point six trillion dollars over a victim's lifetime. So maybe framing it like this within a capitalist society will get people to do the right thing. Like, do the right thing. I don't know. It maybe it'll encourage them. To, maybe it will encourage them to do the work. Y'all are losing money. But we will not lose hope and we will not stop fighting ever. <laughs> I love y'all too, too bad for making it to the end of this video. What were your thoughts? There's so much more that I could have covered and maybe we'll do a part two. Um, I love you. I love you too, too bad. But before I let you go, you know, I will never, ever leave you without saying this. I am in a constant state of practice and so are you. You can never fail when you're in a constant state of practice. I love you. Bye, homegirl.